While forces of discrimination, oppression, and hatred have gathered outside, we have come by faith, in love, and with purpose to contradict the public perception that people of faith do not support the sacred worth and equality of our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and questioning sisters and brothers. Our faith enables us to rise above and to proceed beyond the present frustrations of our times. Faith can move mountains. It was not too long ago that people of faith stood with my great-grandparents over the issue of slavery, and out of that stand they took, liberation soon came to pass for my people. It came by and through the power of faith. Cooperative action of the faith of two or more people working together can alter the course of the world and dismantle the kind of systemic societal sickness that State Bill one, Senate Bill 106 and House Bill 777 seek to perpetuate. This extreme legislation will only cause needless pain and suffering, and we stand in opposition. First of all, the anti-LGBT amendment is a distraction from voters' priorities. At a time when legislators should be chopping away at unemployment rates and searching for ways to build a budget that would befriend the poor and marginalize, mm -hmm. legislators are choosing to advance this divisive social agenda that wreaks havoc on the entire community. Secondly, the anti-gay amendment is bad business. Mm -hmm. It impedes on the rights of businesses to provide competitive employee benefits and sends a message to major employers that the state of North Carolina does not welcome a diverse workplace. Mm -hmm. And perhaps most important of all, the anti-gay amendment doesn't change marriage in any way. Marriage of same-sex couples is already denied in the state of North Carolina. What the amendment does do is put the basic rights of the LGBT minority up for a vote of a majority, which causes real trauma. Mm -hmm. It traumatizes parents, mm -hmm. like Elkie Kennedy, whose son Sean was bullied and killed for being gay. It traumatizes vulnerable LGBT young people by sending a devastating message that their state considers them second-class citizens unworthy of basic dignity and fair treatment. Thousands of teens face traumatic depression, fear, rejection, persecution, and isolation, and this extreme legislation would write discrimination into the Constitution. During my tenure as the campus minister of a church-related college a few years ago, I counseled many students who were conflicted over their sexual preferences and the one that stands out most was the male student who was at the end of his rope and communicated how he intended to take his life that evening. While he was with me, I alerted security that I needed a room search conducted, and it was confirmed that the student did have a gun in his room. To escape the ridicule and taunts, to prevent the bullying and badgering, that had become all too common over the course of the 19 years he had lived, that young man now considered suicide to be the only remedy. At that moment, that student's life was far more important to me than his sexual orientation, and what he was about to do was far more weighty than any of the fundamental religious platitudes often used to destroy life and cause more trauma. All life is precious. What will it take to reverse the trauma we inflict on others that produces permanent and indelible scars? When will we see the injustice in the social, emotional, and psychological harm that we impose on others? The one thing I've come to know about justice is that justice will stretch you far beyond a pretentious scheme. It will strike you blind to the deepest or palest skin tone and neutralize your political leanings on a sexual preference. 
Justice will cause you to evolve to higher stages of development that will cause you to love your neighbor as yourself. Should not legislators be about ushering in justice? The anti-LGBT amendment is not fair and it is certainly not just. Justice and fairness, fairness and justice, that's all the people want. Thank you. Amen. Amen.